The boycott, divestment and sanctions campaign against Israel, or BDS, has become one of the most prominent international grassroots movements against the Israeli policy of occupation and colonization of historic Palestine. In December 2008, Israel launched a massive surprise invasion of the Gaza Strip. Much of Gaza was reduced to rubble and more than a thousand Palestinians died. Massive war crimes and crimes against humanity were committed by the Israeli army in Gaza. It's not just the Israeli army that is guilty in this massacre and, and grave violation of international law. It's the entire Israeli establishment, including academic uh, institutions, cultural institutions and others. Not just that they have not said anything against the massacre. Of course they were silent. There was no condemnation. They fully supported it. Israel said that continuing rocket attacks justified their three-week offensive, but worldwide protests were overwhelmingly in favor of the besieged Palestinians. It is specifically the massacres in Gaza that really, in a way, uh, mobilized many people in Europe, in Australia, um, in the United States particularly, where it's very difficult to, to have a movement go on. It mobilized them particularly uh, more towards supporting the logic of BDS. The logic of BDS is pressure, not persuasion. Uh, the Palestinian campaign for boycott, divestment and sanctions, or BDS, um, is a call that came out in 2005, a year after the ruling by the International Court of Justice against the Israeli wall and colonies built on occupied Palestinian territory. It was endorsed by more than 170 unions, political forces, organizations and networks, social movements in Palestine. Um, it's, it represented Palestinian civil society everywhere. The Gaza war was a very big uh, shock, like an earthquake uh, in France with huge demonstrations. Uh, many of them got involved in the BDS campaign. We uh, tried to show how to get uh, active in, in the BDS campaign by organizing spectacular actions in French supermarkets to show the people what were the goods we should not buy, goods exported by Israel and very often uh, coming from stolen Palestinian uh, lands. And this uh, was very interesting because not only then we were more um, uh, numerous as uh, uh, activists for Palestine, but also uh, with new generations of young people and people from all origins working all together. The products that are sold at Carrefour. Et oui, la honte pour la France, la honte sur des territoires volés, des terres volées, des terres aux Palestiniens, on vole leur eau, leur terre, et on vend ça à Carrefour, quelle honte. L'Afrique du Sud a commencé à trembler quand tous les pays ont boycotté. Voilà, c'est marqué, apporté de Israël. Et on fait passer un message à Sarkozy, les politiques, s'ils ne veulent pas agir, nous on va agir. Voilà. Les lingettes pour bébés qui sont vendues ici aux Français, c'est inadmissible. Ils tuent des bébés, ils, ils, tuent des bébés, ils veulent vendre des lingettes pour bébés en après. C'est de la mauvaise qualité. C'est Clémentine de Jaffa. C'est autant de bombes avec lesquelles ils ont détruit des maisons, détruit des maisons habitées, des écoles, des mosquées. On les achète So we demonstrated uh, in uh, all France and uh, in places that are well known, like Champs Elysees. So, for example, we went there to protest against the sale of Ahava cosmetics that are labeled to come from Israel uh, while they come from uh, the West Bank, from settlements, uh, which is completely illegal. <laughs> The 
boycott is not only fruit and vegetables. We went to see Vanessa Paradis, uh, very famous uh, in, in France and uh, uh, elsewhere, to, uh, to, to tell her not to go and, and sing uh, in Israel. On ne peut pas, quand on, est, on a une notoriété comme la sienne, euh, se, rendre, euh, se, se, se rendre en Israël, ce qui serait forcément euh, comment dire, interprété comme une sorte de, de soutien à cet État. Vanessa, n'y va pas Vanessa, n'y va pas She decided, after the show, to cancel her, uh, the, the, the fact to go to Israel. If Israeli uh, uh, workers or tomato growers or avocado growers cannot be exempted and, and shouldn't be exempted, there's no reason on earth that academics should have special immunity. They don't have special immunity. In fact, they are benefiting from the very system which oppresses us. I mean, uh, we're talking about structures of domination. They are part of it. They have not challenged it, and therefore that those institutions cannot claim to be special. Israeli institutions, especially the academy, especially universities, cultural institutions, economics, sports, and so on, they're all complicit. Complicity is not just by silence. It's not just that they don't condemn the occupation, which is a fact. No Israeli university has ever condemned the occupation. This supermarket protest would be reproduced worldwide but it also drew the attention of Zionist groups, which led to scores of lawsuits. The government is uh, trying to criminalize BDS campaign. Obviously, they obey to instruction from the pro-Israeli lobby. In this matter, we, we feel uh, that uh, we are not more in a democracy. The government tells the church how they have to judge and this is completely unacceptable. But despite the pressure, the French legal system has usually upheld BDS's right to political expression. This French senator was not convicted over her participation in a BDS action. It is very, very crucial that uh, big corporations will be held responsible for their involvement in illegal activity in the occupation. We have investigated Veolia. Veolia is a French company and there is a big European campaign about Veolia because Veolia is going to be the operator for the Jerusalem light rail system. We are in the settlement of Pisgat Zev in North Jerusalem. This settlement is where the tramway starts. The objective of the tramway is to make the settlement, this is the biggest settlement in Jerusalem, closer to the city and allow the people of the settlement to commute to West Jerusalem. What we're speaking here is not only ethnic cleansing, but more clearly a situation of a reality of our apartheid. This tram line is being constructed by a local and international corporation, which include companies like Alstom and Veolia. But thanks to the international boycott campaign, it started to be very problematic for them to invest in the construction of the tramway. Veolia have lost, and Alstom, both of them, have lost several contracts because while they are building here, they are breaking the international law. All these settlements, this settlement is totally illegal. According to the international law, it is forbidden for Israel to transfer its own population into occupied territories. This is according to the Fourth Geneva Convention, and it was ratified by the International Court of Justice on July 9, 2004. The settlements are illegal both in the West Bank proper and in East Jerusalem. But not only the settlements are illegal, it's illegal to contribute to the committing of this crime. Any company that invests in this area, like Veolia or Alstom, which are building this tramway, are themselves breaking the international law. Since uh, 1948, Israel was created on the destruction of Palestinian society. So they destroyed Palestinian society and expelled most of the Palestinians. Uh, between 750 to 850,000 Palestinians were expelled, were ethnically cleansed, to make room, so to speak, for the Jewish immigrants coming from Europe, escaping from the Holocaust. Uh, so it was a colonial project from the beginning, uh, intended to break down Palestinian society, to prevent Palestinians from organizing themselves again into a society. 
So the Palestinians were immediately segmented into Palestinians inside what became Israel, Palestinians in the West Bank and Gaza, as well as Palestinian refugees. Uh, this segmentation is continuing. In the last few years, Israel has segmented the West Bank into Bantustans, preventing free movement between one Bantustan and the other, to move from Jericho to Nablus, from Nablus to Bethlehem, from Ramallah to Jenin, you need a special military permit. So it has become extremely difficult for merchants, for farmers, for students, for doctors, for teachers to go to their work, to go to their land, to, the, to go to their universities. So Israel is, is basically slowly but very persistently, not just ethnically cleansing the Palestinians, destroying the possibility of uh, development of a Palestinian society inside the historic land of Palestine. As Israel has been accused of war crimes, it seems the place to begin should be the International Criminal Court. Amira from Gaza went to The Hague to demand justice after she was wounded and her entire family killed by Israeli bombs. A progress in, the, the, in international law was the creation of the ICC, uh, but the ICC still uh, falls short to uh, clearly uh, address the issue of the crimes committed by uh, Israel and by uh, the Israeli government. Today, our states and uh, international bodies uh, are still very reluctant and uh, fail to sanction Israel for its violations of human rights. Uh, everybody knows that uh, the military industry in Israel is one of the core uh, uh, issues and the core uh, mights of Israel on the international level. Israel is venu vendre ses drones avec lesquels elle a lancé des missiles sur Gaza en janvier pendant la nouvelle année. 70 résolutions, plus de 6 millions de réfugiés rentrés dans ce bâtiment, c'est accepter les crimes de guerre israéliens. Pour entrer dans ce bâtiment, c'est accepter la complicité de l'État français. Aujourd'hui, la campagne boycott des investissements aux sanctions française demande à tout le monde d'arrêter l'ensemble des liens avec l'État d'Israël. Uh, many would say, even before the BDS movement, that we should embargo uh, shipping armament to Israel. Uh, we should not allow our state to ship armament to Israel. But uh, today, it is almost a non-issue. Israel is exporting armament. Israel is testing on the Palestinians its new armament and exporting it to France and to European countries. Big cities have an almost as important role as uh, states. Paris, for example, hosted uh, recently uh, Shimon Peres, the president of uh, Israel, who is known for his uh, crimes in Kana, in uh, Lebanon for supporting the war on Gaza, etc. Sans doute l'artisan le plus efficace de la création de cet état. Uh, there is no reason why uh, we in Paris should host uh, such a criminal. And this is by protesting that we can manage uh, to at least sanction Israel on the local level. The time had come for large-scale operations. In December 2009, the March for Gaza in Egypt was the first in what would be a series of massive protests aimed to capture the world's attention. We want to go to Gaza! When people in South Africa were struggling against apartheid, and really they thought they couldn't win, and the Prime Minister of Britain, Margaret Thatcher, excuse me, Margaret Thatcher, she said, we will never see a black majority government in my lifetime. Well, she's wrong, she's wrong. And the South Africans here carry a message, they could win, but it was very dark and very difficult, and sometimes they were in despair. And when they were in despair, some Irish shop workers refused to handle South African goods, and they said a light shone around the world, and it gave them the courage to continue. We are here to do two things to tell our comrades in, in Gaza and Palestine they are going to win and to tell the Israelis they will pay an increasing price. But with the land route to Gaza blocked by the Egyptian government, activists turned to the sea. The Turkish-led Freedom Flotilla in 2010 would be both a success and a tragedy. The flotilla began very simply with the citizens from 
all around the world going to, to, to Gaza in order to break the siege. But the Israeli repression and aggression of uh, the flotilla, killing uh, nine people uh, on the Turkish boat, uh, led to an international outcry. And to many people understand that if Israel responded this way, uh, that meant that the flotilla kind of action was really the kind of thing that should be done. Uh, many people around the world gathered and uh, gathered money and gathered all their energy in order to have a second flotilla uh, which would be even bigger with even more countries involved in order to break the siege on Gaza. Everybody knows the result. The Greek government has put up uh, fake obstacles to keep us here. Israeli blockade of Gaza has come to the European waters in Greece and that it is unacceptable. The attention is only focused on the Gaza Strip. But in the meantime, what does Israel do? They uh, take advantage of this to worsen the ethnic cleansing in the West Bank and East Jerusalem. And this is very uh, critical. So you should also have some uh, spectacular initiative uh, in the direction of the West Bank and East Jerusalem. And so we were 500 women, children and men to buy tickets to fly to Tel Aviv on the 8th of July. And what happened? You know the result. Uh, you know, many of, uh, of us were blocked in European uh, airports and um, a bit more than 120 were jailed as soon as they arrived at uh, Tel Aviv airport. We were invited by the pacifist Palestinians to nous in Palestine, and we were surprised to see that the company Malev ne not pas de us. They told us that they had received orders from the de la hiérarchie qu'on leur avait fait du chantage et des menaces en leur disant que si nous mentions à bord, eh bien, euh, l'avion n'atterrirait pas en Israël et nous serions réexpulsés. Denied access to Palestine yet again, counter protests were held around the world. Today, there is a change. There is, there is a change. We, we are not only fighting against uh, this uh, repressive system, but we also have hope enough with these revolutions happening in the Arab world that we can fight for something. We also hope that uh, Israel, which is in fact the hardest and the most awful dictatorship in the region, will fall through the mobilization of the young Palestinians and all of the young Arabs. Will it work? Of course it will. It's already working. It's not something that we're foreseeing. The Palestinian boycott calls started in 2004, 2005. A few years later, we already have major support from major unions, even in Europe, even in Canada, and starting in the US as well. Uh, so now it's not a marginal movement, it's becoming much more mainstream. So it is working.